Hey there YouTube, I wasn't sure that I was going to uh, make a video today, I did have several attempts earlier, but it always, it just ended up with 20 minutes of bitch moan wine, and yeah, after a number of hours trying to record something, I finally gave up and decided, no, nah, I'm not going to subject you to that, I wouldn't want to see that. However, I was sent a link to a video from the Queen of Binary Dogma herself, wherein once again she throws out there her, um, what I consider anti-theistic rhetoric, um, based on the premise of a binary set um, and it's 13 minutes long this video and I'm very nearly in the video that I was trying to make earlier I was trying to say something nice ironically um, about um, her and Coughlin and um, uh, the amazing atheist being cited in a paper about internet ownage um, and yeah, bravo to uh, Dick Coughlin for, in his reaction to that, getting across the message, really academia? Of all the topics to pick for a thesis, the best you can come up with is the likes of me. Um, Bionic Dance's response to it, um, all I really got from that was, I'm going to be a saint. Um, that's, that both of those, that's my own personal interpretation of uh, their reaction videos. Um, but in her follow-up, um, she, she, I could spend the next hour wasting both your life and mine, um, just pointing out the various minutiae of where her argument breaks down. But quite frankly, as that would entail um, considerably more of my life to actually edit together such a breakdown of her video, um, <clears throat> for an audience that probably isn't going to watch most of it anyway and isn't going to appreciate what I'm saying in it. <sighs> and then it occurred to me, well, actually, I don't need to. Because... Um, the entire argument that she puts forward, and it's something that she stresses many, many times, relies on the existence of this, uh, what does she call it? Yes, the God belief bit. And this bit is either switched in an on state or an off state. Okay. Quite apart from the fact that the demographic that that analysis produces is only pertinent to those who have answered the specific question in question, namely, do you believe in a god or gods? Yes or no? and completely excludes um, the rest of the universe. Um, and I am focusing uh, particularly on the sentient universe or entities of sentience within the universe who have either through ignorance, choice or other reasons not yet answered that question.
Um, so they exist in a different binary grouping over here. The binary set that she's alluding to exists here in the branch that have answered the question, um, which is fine. But her whole argument rests upon this being an on off condition. And only when it is on, uh, the rest of the argument goes off about these uh, various generalizations, um, which any realist looking at the actual demographics would realize that it is an attribution of a minority to a majority. Um, but all of that aside, before we even get that far, for any of her arguments to hold any validity at all, if empirical proof is as one would presuppose the foundation upon which a valid belief is acceptable, then the onus is upon Kate to prove what she has used as a, a seemingly axiomatic foundation to base her argument upon. She needs to prove that this God belief bit actually exists. It needs to be identified, it needs to be evaluated, and it needs to be demonstrated. And unfortunately, not only is the logic, even the binary logic, um, that she would need um, against her in this, um, insofar as the binary, the sets that she is alluding to, actually, sorry, it was over this side, wasn't it? Actually pertinent only to those who have answered the question. It is not pertinent to those who have not answered the question, because those who have not answered the question, when they eventually do answer the question, there will be a portion of those that will answer the question in the affirmative as well as those that answer in the negative. So, different bunch of subsets to the ones that we are um, conceding exist within the theist, not a theist dichotomy. Um, the other little rider that I just want to put onto that is uh, as soon as you um, identify a set, a dichotomous set that exists of, um, okay, this specific demographic here and everybody else there, pretty much by definition, you are singling out one of many possible alternative demographics on this one issue um, and singling that demographic out, demarcating an us and them dichotomy. That amounts to a discrimination on the basis that if you possess this attribute, then you are to be discriminated against. As evident in, if it, if, if your God belief switch is on, um, 
at which point I would point out that um, stupidity, irrationality, dogged determination to hold on to the demonstrably wrong or errant is not limited to any one particular subset of the human species. Um, I just hope that uh, I haven't looked at haven't looked at this paper yet. I am going to download it because I'm curious to see the context in which um, the various um, uh, citations have been used in context. Um, but uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see that. Um, so I'm going to uh, go and download that now. Um, I doubt I'll comment further on this, but um, really, if you're going to contend the existence of a God belief parameter and use that as a determining way to partition human demographics into us and them uh, for the purposes of jumping up and down on them, then you are going to have to prove the validity of that particular claim, that foundational claim that there does exist a God belief parameter in the human mind that can be switched on and off and in doing so please do take account of the capacity of the human mind to hold simultaneously conflicting thoughts conflicting concepts conflicting ideas and hold each to be true given certain prerequisite parameters and on that uh, this was longer than I thought it was going to be, but uh, hey, um, something for you guys, uh, particularly my trolls, to get your teeth into. So have at it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.